So at 6 o'clock, I'd like to uh, open the February 11, 2019 Wood Woodbury Select Board meeting. Uh, first, I'd like to ask if there are any adjustments to the agenda. Brian? None. Michael? Have any. No. Really? No. Unusual. Oh, it is. <laughs> <clears throat> and since there are no members of the public here, there will be no public comment. Pretty obvious. <laughs> So next on the agenda is to approve the bills to the town. Make a motion to approve the bills. I'll second it. Any discussion? Brian? Oh, no. No discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the previous select board meeting. I know Michael, I think you have a copy of that. If not, yeah, I do. A copy no, I have a copy. <clears throat> I read them earlier today, and I didn't find anything un unusual about okay. them. And I made the one change yep. that, that you suggested. So. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So I'd like to introduce a motion that we approve the meeting minutes from January 28, 2019 Select Board meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'll sign. Uh, Let's pass it on. You've got that all printed out? Yeah, it is. I need to come. <clears throat> it's coming your way. Oh. I don't need to print it out for you. No, no. It's pretty self sufficient here tonight. Computer just turned right on. Mm -hmm. wow. All right, Ms. Want me to sure. Yeah. Ms. Smith, if we're ready for her report. Ms. Smith. <clears throat> She's been moving right along here. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to get first snow tomorrow night. Yeah. Tomorrow night and Wednesday morning, uh, and during the day too, I guess. It has sure snowed a lot this year. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of snow in the woods. Rain, general, yeah. And mm -hmm. Thank you. Taxes come down a lot. Just trying to remember. There are ninety-six thousand dollars now. By the looks of it. Yes, ninety-six, one forty-one, sixty-five. Is it higher than last year? Does anyone remember? Mm -hmm. There should be a comparison <coughs> here on the, on the financial statement. The bank, yeah. Well, that's the end of the year. It's not going to be. Right. That's that's correct. To key. Same time frame that goes to 12 months, and this is only at eight. I think last year it was over that. I thought it was like a hundred and fifteen thousand huh. dollars. So that's come down. Due to due from, which equals to the four hundred and forty-three thousand ninety-three dollars and nineteen cents. So I'm just looking yeah. at this, Brandy. Mm -hmm. So the paving reserve is forty-two thousand. Yes. Okay. And what else is interesting here? Highway equipment reserve, mm -hmm. which is not a four-letter word, mm -hmm. is sixteen thousand four hundred and seventy-eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are, in fact, some of them are reserve funds and others are just funds. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and we'll have a discussion about the paving reserve fund yeah, that's, that's in the, uh, the highway portion of the meeting because we'll probably cap that. So revenue over the last two weeks? Mm -hmm. Our Swenson check came in for $7,409.64. That's a quarterly? Yes. Okay. Like that sure. uh, delinquencies that have come in in the last two weeks, $12,435.92. Well, that's nice. Yeah. A couple weeks worth. Yeah. yeah, that is nice. So I like this for... And, and uh, the way you split it up, you know, 35, 40, and 25, you can see it <coughs> right on the sheet. And also, it, once the town report comes in, um, I am more than happy. And I'm yeah, planning on announcing which pages can they can find the income for each of them. They each have their own balance sheet mm -hmm. um, cool. for the funds. So it'll be very clear to see... Um, last fiscal years and then starting this year creating the excel spreadsheet that will go into the report next year okay. mm -hmm. but it's not going into the general fund right. so this payment from swenson was that for the end of um last year 2018 or was that for the first payment for 2000 because they pay by a calendar year they do yep so was that for this year? It was October, November, December. Okay, so it's for the, the last quarterly payment for last year. Right. Yeah. Okay. So has it been? So what what did we get for a total for the year 2018 from Swenson? Well, I didn't start the Excel spreadsheet until this fiscal year. Uh huh. Um, she was going to email me because on the stubs it doesn't give her enough room in the memo mm -hmm. to put cubic. Well, I don't care about the grid. I'm wondering how much um, for this year we, how much money we got from Swenson Quarry. Total. Total. Yeah. Is it in this sheet? It's not. There's only two funds in that. Okay. That doesn't show that. Yeah, because so. we were. It doesn't show the other 14. Well, the other 12 funds. So if this was a quarterly payment, was are the other quarterly payments roughly similar? the same. Roughly the same. Yep. So. Some okay. fluctuating by like 200, but so, four. so technically we've only received so about, about 16. Yeah, so about the 28,000 that we right. kind of guesstimate, estimate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Good guess. <laughs> I transferred 10,000 today to cover expenses uh, from the money market leaving us with $2,496.53 in the checking. Um, yeah. Still got plenty more money in the money market. Yeah. Yeah. He had a zero until first of the year again. Or, or till the next budget. Till November or something. October. Two more taxes. Over. Yeah. Tax well, listers, listers promise to have their stuff done on time this year. Uh -huh. I don't have any questions. Okay. And I had mentioned to, to Brandy, I had asked Brandy to print out, you know, any uh, surplus funds, uh, surplus mm -hmm. money. And so Brandy did print out a document that indicates that there are surplus funds available and this would help to further any tax increase that we that might be anticipated mm -hmm. so I believe that once we get the actuals from fiscal year 2019 mm -hmm. we can take a look at this snapshot in time which was today I think Randy, wasn't it this was as of June of June of last year. June of last Ending year. Ending of June last okay. year. June so of last year. Showing okay. revenue. So. Okay. One slide yeah, liability we'll, and then the other ones are taken away. Mm -hmm. So you're anticipating what kind of numbers for leftover? For this fiscal year? Yeah. No. No anticipation yet. No. I, I wouldn't even want to guess. Right. 
Last year, last fiscal year, it was what 135,000 roughly. Correct. Really? Yeah. 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 So that's why it would be premature to speculate. Like, like right. Brandon's yeah. Like, no, you never know. Premature. With this winter. Yeah. 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 What Brandy also did, this is part of our discussion later, was to compile a printout for uh, funds in the school district's building maintenance reserve fund mm -hmm. you know, that had been earmarked you know, to replace the roof. Mm -hmm. So this shows $96,000 sitting in that reserve fund mm -hmm. for building maintenance. So since we now the uh, concrete proof that the town owns the building, we should, and this will be another discussion later right. on, we should move forward with you know, sending that RFP out and mm -hmm. moving forward with doing that roof this year. So you don't think that the board has sent out the RFPs yet? They've not. No. They've not. Okay. No, they I sent an RFP. They won't because we own the building. Yeah. Right. So. Now it's just a matter of getting um, the handover. So that's right. the, um, the funds are yep. right. in the town's, the board's hands, I guess, yep. however you put it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. We have a friend, <clears throat> the treasury part of that operation, mm -hmm. so uh -huh. we, might, <laughs> <laughs> we might be yeah. able to get Yeah, I thought about that, so that. those guys aren't <clears throat> going to do the RFP now because of... Because you know, they don't own the building. Right. Because they don't own the building. Yeah. So it's a great RFP. But if we can go, we have the building fund maintenance, and then if we can get have the school board authorize the fund balance revenue left over from last year, then it should be plenty enough to replace sure. the roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the RFP is great. Uh, we'd have to, I think, I sent you guys an email, change some of the, change some of the wording in it, yeah. change some of the uh, contact information in it. So, you know, the bones are there for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. It is time to start getting that out then because yeah. we waited too so long last year. That's what happened last year. Yeah. Yeah. It was too late. Yeah. And if we do get a reprieve from the legislature for you know making the new union, we should jump right on this too. Mm -hmm. Get it done. Okay. I think so. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Diana? So did we strike the audit entirely? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Second one on the list. Let's see the sequence of events here. Well, if you recall, at one of those school board meetings, Joanne suggested that we do the school business second, <coughs> which usually we would because we sort of switch back and forth and last year we did the school business first. First, yeah. But in order for anybody to get here from OSSU, she thought it would be better to do it second, so that worked out. Huh. I also took off the <clears throat> duplicative election of the school treasurer since she was already elected as a school treasurer last year. And Joanne seemed to indicate that the only reason it was on there was because she didn't know that Brandy had already been elected for a three-year term, not a three-year term. And also the uh, fact that they d the public doesn't elect the assistant treasurer. Right. The treasurer appoints the assistant treasurer. So. Yeah. So. Pre-town meeting a, meeting. Pre-town meeting, yeah. <coughs> well, I'm... So that's queued up for... 
The 28th? 8th, right. At 6.30? Thursday night, yeah. To yeah. 28th? Yeah. 6.30. At the community room, I just have to make sure I get a key or some way to get in there because Granny's gone that week. Okay. But it's approved as far as you know scheduling sure. the room. How Steve's long? on board. Yeah. Do we have to warn that two days or? It's warned in the town meeting, the town report. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. So, <coughs> if you want to put anything else, you can put something on the website or. We will. We'll yeah. put it on the website. Will people get the town report <coughs> by then? You bet. Okay. All right. They need to get it 10 days before, before town meeting. meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah. Right. So, so will you post that? I'll give her something. Oh, something, something to post. Something to post, right. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we put it on front porch? For <coughs> oh, yeah, you that's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. They'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. I'll put it on uh, Woodbury Connections. Mm -hmm. You don't need to give me anything. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that brings us to the subject of the town report, which is at the printers. And, um, you know, after much back and forth over the last couple of weeks. And Sundays. Everything's perfect. Saturdays. Yeah, Saturdays and the week <clears throat> before last. But, uh, yeah, and we decided this year, or I decided, to have the printer do the mailing. In the past when we tried that it didn't work out very well because we ended up sending out more reports and didn't get any back when they go to the wrong address or if the person is not there anymore. So this year I decided I would spend four hours one Saturday or Sunday and take the whole mailing list and make sure it's what they call householded so only one is going to Brian sure, and yeah. Judy Shatney. Yeah. And, uh, uh, although you might get two because I'm going to want to have one for the office. <laughs> anyway, I'm not sure how I did that, but um, but basically I weaned down the uh, uh, checklist from 700 to about three, a little less than 400. Well, and they and it's going to cost a lot less. So in a, so um, usually I would go to Barry and pick them up and bring them here. I was just remembering how you and Peter stopped by last year. They saw me loading in these boxes and they stopped and helped. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, then spending a few days unpacking the boxes, putting the labels on, putting the stamps on, fighting with the post office over the postage, which that. gets worse every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we really tried for years to give our post office the business so it would make it look like you know just pump up their numbers a little more but it just wasn't worth it anymore it was so hard it was all gonna have to go through hard work this year and Yikes. so it'll cost less and so I expect to see that fairly soon good hmm. yeah and you're gonna be surprised when you see the picture on the cover oh yeah yeah is it a beaver no. <laughs> Ma Michael took the picture. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Michael standing on a beaver dam. <laughs> Michael going in the mud up to his yeah. uh, waist. You know. No, that would have been good, but you probably don't have any pictures you know, of that. My brother just sent me a card. Um, it was my birthday a few weeks ago. and He sent me a card. There's a beaver lodge. That's like a photograph. And then there's sort of a cartoon picture of a beaver sitting on top of the lodge with a mug of beer. <laughs> it's a great card. <laughs> well, no, it's your picture of the turtle walk. Oh, okay, turtle well, walk. Kylie. It's very, yeah. very colorful and yeah. Bunch of kids everybody's in it. happy. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It'd be a nice cover. Yeah. yeah, so next. Any more questions about the town report or oh, town meeting great. preparation oh. or anything? I'll probably need some help the day before. Monday, Laura, hopefully you can come and help set up the, mm -hmm. the school and Larry will get the chairs all in place. And Is he retiring? I don't know. I heard the same thing you did at that meeting. Yeah. There were kind of a few whispers. Um, whispers, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> don't been there start any time. rumors. He, <laughs> yeah. he must be retirement age. Are we all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We keep working. 
Probably not you. I, I have a question not related to the <laughs> town reporter town meeting, but um, we had talked about appointments last. Yeah. Are, you, are you making calls? Did or? I say anything? Did I say I would? I think you said you, you would. said would make calls. Yeah. Make yeah. calls <clears throat> to a couple people. I think I said that. Well, we did we go? Through, I think we kind of went through a list, and there were we did, yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. you were going to call mm -hmm. different people on the. Mm -hmm. So. You don't have to call me. If the planning commission will have me, I'll. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sometime before Definitely. town meeting, I'll do that. Okay. Um, so the meeting last week with Lauren Oates and Claire Rock from DEMHS and CVRPC was really nice, was a good meeting. It was. And I was hoping that by now we would have some kind of an estimate from our engineer to plug in the number of how much it's going to cost to do the whole streamback restoration. So then I could put it, put the last <coughs> couple of numbers in the grant application and have you sign it, but that didn't happen. So um, that's all I'm waiting for. She did sound like the additional money they were going to need is not a big deal. She even said, you know, make sure you request enough. But the first when I first did this, there was this whole. I mean, this four what four four years ago, five years ago. There was this uh, big calculation that was going on. They had to be able to show, or we had to be able to show that there was enough losses to offset the amount right. of money that was going to go in. So there was a ratio uh, or something. Yeah. But I guess the, it worked out well enough so it doesn't matter if we need another 100000 or so. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. she did say to uh, arrive at a figure and then factor it by yeah. a factor. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you feel comfortable with. She said be conservative and I said, do you mean like they said, you don't mean like be thrifty. No, she didn't mean that. No. She meant make sure you ask for enough. Right. right. So. But we have to be aware, yeah. too, that the more money we get from FEMA, the more we're we're more, yeah. the more so time we need match. more. Yeah. 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 Hopefully it won't be much more than what we've estimated sure. so far. So I need to have somebody, uh, the last signatory for the grant was Guy Ruel. So if you guys would appoint somebody else to be the signatory for future... Um, future versions of the application. I can't nominate Michael. I'm not a board member. I don't know. If we, I don't know. I don't know if we need nomination. No, 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 no. Just, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. And thank you so much for shoveling off that roof. We got this today. It's so starting to show some bare spots. That brings up a point. I pretty much destroyed my scoop shovel. Would the town be willing to reimburse me for buying a new one? Be about I fifty dollars. I think that would be fair. I think it would be fair. Thank you. Uh, maybe you should just pick, maybe just buy one and take it out of petty cash or something. Uh huh. Okay. Whatever. I'll talk to my. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty well split up and busted. So. Oh. Well. <laughs> At least you're not split up and busted. No, no, that's right. You didn't fall. I was a little sore the next day. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> you didn't climb up on the roof, though, did you? Of course I did. How else would I do? Oh, man. <laughs> Good thing Skip wasn't there. He would have been calling the insurance company. Well, it was nice. He would have called it, Get this guy off the roof. <laughs> I was a volunteer, so I wouldn't have. But there was enough, you know, there were layers of rain, ice, snow, so mm. that um, I just left the bottom layer on, so I had plenty to crunch my boots into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm. if that structure had collapsed oh, underneath... Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there is, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> picking him out of the basement. <laughs> I, I didn't shovel off the part that had already collapsed. Oh, good. <laughs> it's like mm. a big crater. Mm. <laughs> you were able to stay away from that. Good. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, then I got this email the other day from Linda Elliott. The, the people that they hired to do the phase one mm -hmm. and the survey all of a sudden want $1,800 more because they realize the survey is going to be difficult. I said, see, so girl, that, you know, is that how this works? Somebody put two people, two companies put in a bid, and the one that gets the bid then gets to ask for like a 30% raise? That's not right. Jumpy. No. Not, I mean, I should have pointed out the fact that doing the phase one another time 
is not going to be any more than reviewing a bunch of reports of that have already been done. Right, for just a couple of years. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How can they do that? I don't know. I didn't hear back when I asked Linda those questions. Because, <laughs> well, Claire is, made it is, her... Is Linda going to be paying for that? Well, it's coming out. She said the yeah. Brella Fund was a little light, so they wondered if FEMA would maybe pay for that. But we asked Linda, asked, um, not, asked Lauren that sure, when yeah. they first came out with the request for a survey, and it was a Brella request. And Lauren said, no, we're not paying for any more testing on that site. So, um, <clears throat> so, uh, like I said, I, but anyway, she made it clear at that meeting that under that, even the phase one stuff, none of that was required by FEMA. Yeah. It was just we needed to do it to get the clean site letter, which was required by FEMA. So all that and the Brella, of course, is totally separate from FEMA because that's just some insurance, liability insurance sure. to protect us if anything else shows up. That was pretty inexpensive. That was $500. Yeah, it was $500 mm -hmm. and we're getting a phase one out of it. Yeah, and phase right. one in the survey, the first estimate was like $6,000. $6, yeah. <clears throat> so. Okay, well, anything else? Yes. Oh, okay. So, at, also at the meeting, Diana oh. presented this uh, project schedule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could share that with sure. Brian and yeah. and Michael. Mm -hmm. So it lays out you know a proposed schedule all the way through project complete October, November, sometime this year. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's pretty exciting. So when we'll submit the, the I guess the Formal application to FEMA for the project, and the, yeah, a budget, you know, an amendment for an amendment, a okay. larger budget. Yeah, that's and scheduled for February and March. She suggested that's yeah, what she Lauren and Lauren felt that, that we would hear back from them. She did say that it would be nice to get it by the fifteenth. So if I do get any information from Don this week, yeah, from, from, could I Pester Michael him. sign that? Pester him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sign it and get it right in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And she said that the two main things that the that FEMA needs are a clean site letter, which we have, and a clear title, which I'm going to contact Sarah and have her get to work on that. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be hard. And part of mm -hmm. this timeline naturally is the building demolition. Yeah. So at our last meeting, we selected the low bidder, Blue Mountain Construction mm -hmm. from Rygate. Mm -hmm. And so here's a, a draft of the agreement between the town of Woodbury and Blue Mountain. So I believe I sent this out to you guys as well mm -hmm. in the recent past. So this is an amalgamation of Paul Gilley's initial draft and some of the edits that I, I put together. Mm -hmm. So the only thing really I believe that has to be done with this is agree upon a payment schedule where we're going to give Blue Mountain right. uh, excavation or construction, you know, any upfront money and then when the project is complete, you know, what is, what is what is project complete? Mm. You know, uh, you know. How do we define that? Mm. And that would be the final payment. Mm -hmm. Completion of removal and cleanup says, but it could be more. It could be more than three payments. It could be upfront payment, and then it could be you know uh, they're going to need to pay the asbestos contractor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's forty thousand dollars. <clears throat> He doesn't want to wait till the end of the whole thing because yeah. that'll be a couple extra weeks. Yeah. So, so yeah, maybe you should run this by them and see what they think. Have you talked to him? No. Okay. No. Yeah, I'll talk to him then. That would make sense. Yeah. When the contractor does his work, he's going to want to get paid. So sure. Yeah. Sure. That we can cut yeah. That initially, check. the uh, asbestos removal will have to be the first thing they do. Right. 
So mm -hmm. do you think this contractor could also do the stream restoration? Or probably and we don't know. We'd probably need to do a whole bunch of permitting first. We do, we first. do, it, yeah, we we do have so to get a design. and the later, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Better have to get everything else down and see what's right. left. And then, yeah. and then whoever wants to, so the guys can actually come and look at the stream. And well, yeah, we'll have to do another yes. RFP because yep. Don didn't think it was possible. But no, I do it all at once because they, they didn't know what to expect under there. You're the only one that's been under there. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even though everybody has seen your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need a tour before. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and uh, I also want to check part three here. Uh, I'll check with Brandy on insurance liability. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. That may be more than we need. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think we have something. They must have been shown us something with their bid. Yeah, they did. Did Paul Remember? Millis come up with that figure? Or? He may have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is a pretty straightforward contract. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, just get rid of the asbestos first, knock it down, bring it to grade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, yeah, they might need to have more. I mean, if the asbestos contractor is half of it, they might need to have more than that to start. Do you think they'd need something for themselves to begin with? Well, mm -hmm. I don't so know they can how, ask. how flush this, this company is with cash. I don't know. You, yeah, company. usually they, I mean, for some, you know, like the fire alarm thing, the guy wanted half of it in the beginning when the, um, the other thing that we did with the garage, um, on the electrician, you know, he wanted money for the materials before he started the work. Sure, so, yeah. so I'm sure there'll be some... He was a little guy. Yeah, yeah he was a little guy. We don't guy. know how big these guys right. are. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that would be... That's not something that we put in for our bid form. Is, and right. nobody asked for no. money set front, but... Right. right. I guess it's it's we don't know. We, we're, yeah. you know... I'm trying to remember, did Lamberty no. ask for any money up front when he did the... Um, Nelson Pond Road culvert. Well, I, don't I don't remember think he, now. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember either. Up, I don't think he did. I don't remember that. Yeah. Mm. Of course, he didn't. He didn't really. The culvert was. He wasn't, you know, getting charged for that initially. So. But, yeah. Okay. We'll if, if they ask about this, about removing all materials from the property, you know, what our response is going to be for that. We did, we did talk about whether, I did find out that it would be okay for them to put those cement slabs in the foundation yeah. when it's, you know, those slabs right. that yeah. are piled Start up over up. by the barn. Yeah. Yeah, because that would be a whole lot of material to have to waste if yeah. <laughs> you have to pay by the ton. Right. Yeah. So, and, uh, so they were the ones actually who suggested it. That's why I followed up and called the a and and they said we can apply for something called an insignificant waste disposal event. Mm -hmm. So something that's not going to decompose on the right. mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll call this gentleman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'll call him this week. Send this to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and talk about, you know, payment schedule. Yeah. Because he may, like you guys were saying, he may mm -hmm. want to pay the asbestos contractor mm -hmm. first. I'm sure they're going yeah. to look for the money once they're done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. This guy seems to be one of the smaller contractors that was bidding on this. Too. Right. Yeah. Some of the other ones were all yeah. bigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Had more cash yeah. mm -hmm. on hand. He may need some money to mm -hmm. get going. Yeah, he sounds very sincere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eager to get the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so and when we go to the bank, we'll have to get money both for the purchase and, you know, the whole thing, I guess. It's not going to, I mean, the interest rate's going to be very low, so if we have extra for a couple months, we'll just pay it back when we're done. Don't want to have, I'm sure Brandy doesn't want to keep going back to the bank. And say, Do we need another $20,000? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she hunt us down. <laughs> okay, anything else? I think that's no. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say we got a crowd gathering. Oh, no. hey, no. Didn't bring any rope with them. Who's a crowd? Two. I'm not sure I see you guys out here. Any discussion I have with okay. three?
Uh, blue mountain excavation. All right, next up is highway crew work report. Um, so let's see. Um, so the sand pile is is in good shape. I think we're, you know I know I've been hearing that some towns are getting low on their sand, but we're in pretty good shape with our sand. Um, See, so you got a hell of a pile. I was over looking at it. Yeah. These guys put up a lot of sand last but, yeah. year. We had a lot of sand left over, so yeah. we're in really good shape. Yeah, we're in good, we're in good shape. Yeah. I know. Um, I know. Callis has put out a notice that um, that they were. Rationing. Yeah, rationing their sand. But you so. drive by and you see a mountain of sand there. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I really hadn't even noticed that. Yeah, yeah. So they still got a big pile. Yeah. 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 So. And here's like Peter is pretty much fully incorporated into the road crew. Um, yeah, Tim and Peter are kind of splitting days, splitting hours, um, depending on when they're needed and what this kind of. Is it. Store. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Is it getting to the point now where we have. Two full-time room crew members and two part-timers. Do their hours equate to a third full-time person? Pretty much so, yeah. Okay. Yep. Do they need to be? It's the next question. <coughs> yeah. If there's a day where they're not sanding, could they say not have somebody in there just because you, you know I don't you know. Need I don't a three-person full-time yeah. over there? Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, like during the winter when the, when there's a break in the weather, whether. Um, you know, there's a lot of maintenance work that goes on, um, so yeah, I really don't know the, the answer to that. And in the summer, um, the summer, like this past summer, um, you know, usually Greg Parkers would have a part-timer with him, you know, doing any of the ditching and culvert work, and then um, Tim did a lot of the hauling of the sand, so, you know, he, so Tim would work yeah, a couple days, because um, uh, day pipe was pretty much done by uh, sure. the summer, and then um, Robert Fair would pretty much work with grade when they were ditching and doing culvert work. And um, Greg Adams was grading the roads pretty much uh, any time that he could. Um, so yeah, that's a good good question. Um, yeah, because they don't need to be there. Right. You know, yeah. Just yeah. sitting around yeah. waiting for it to snow. Yeah. Right. Just because we have two guys subbing doesn't mean they need to be right. have a three-man crew yeah. full time. Because yeah. I don't think we're at that stage yet. Yeah. I think a lot of the, the maintenance work in the winter, you know, it's, I think Greg Parkers is thinking of having, you know, either Tim or Peter just involved. So they just start learning a little bit more about, you know, taking care of the equipment maintenance work. Um, so, but I don't, you know, I guess we could look at the timesheets too and see how much, you know, how much time they're spending there in the winter. But I'll, I'll, you know, I'll ask Greg about that. I know usually if I do go down and leave them on, on Friday, um, and usually it's just Greg and Greg that are there, so and they're kind of wrapping up the week. And, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I just want to hope that they're not having them there just for the sake of having them. No, yeah, no, I think they're, they're not necessary, then yeah, you know, two minute crew is enough some right. days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if they're there, they're, they're busy. So. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. I, I'll check with Greg about that. Yeah. Just ask him. So the trees on the Azorth Road are down on the ground, so that's that's behind us now. Um, and a few more comments on that. <laughs> that. Those are Mike McGlynn's trees, correct? Yes, <laughs> okay. they are now his trees. Um, I'm starting to get um, communication from VTrans and um, uh, stuff about the municipal roads general permit, you know, kind of anticipating um, the coming summer work for the year. Um, there was a whole slew of things that I haven't looked at yet from Shauna Clifford from VTrans. Did you see that today? Yeah, actually I, I received that about a week ago or so and you sent it to me and Diana sent it to me too so I've got three rounds of it that have come in. Oh really? But, yeah. So yeah. No excuse. Yeah, no. So, um, um, so I thought, you know, we <coughs> And then we usually have an annual meeting um, with Shauna where we kind of go over um, the amount of mileage of class two, class three roads we have, and, and that you know gives us the amount that we get from VTrans. I'm going to ask her, talk to her a little bit about a paving grant. Um, I'm thinking ahead um, for the Upper Cabot Road. Now that we have um, a substantial amount of money in the paving fund, um, 
yeah. to maybe to maybe look at that again for probably not this coming summer, but maybe the following summer. Um, and thinking also that maybe we would have the uh, uh, grant and you know implementation work for the other side of the road on Valley Lake Road with the school, so that the paving could all be done at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think we have enough money in the paving fund right now to pay for those two projects. So. Mm -hmm. would be, uh, we just saw that it was 42,000. 42,000, yeah. Yeah, the apron into the school and then the... Yeah, uh, and then down to Route 14 um, you know, by the, the um, new old store. Mm -hmm. um, so I know um, Brandy and I looked um, at the town report from a few years ago when we tried to, when we had in the in the budget for that year to do the paving on the upper part of Cabot Road to the quarry. Um, and the estimate at that point for the town's match um, was $28,200. Oh. And I, I remember that there was a figure for the, um, you know, the Valley Lake Road up to the school. Um, I don't trust my memory to, to remember exactly what it was, and I can't find any information about it. Um, hmm. So I, I'm tempted to go down in the town garage and just go through all the old files and might be something I'm pretty sure that they gave us a number. Before. Yeah, there was a, there was yeah. a number. Yeah, we did. So, um, and then we, you know, we got a bill for, and, uh, for their, our annual uh, municipal roads general permit, um, $1,350, and there's also a, kind of a sign-on sheet. I, uh, this appears like every year we'll be um, signing up for it somehow. Um, so, um, and Greg has a list that he started um, for summer road work that we're kind of going over. So, we'll probably anticipate doing another um, municipal roads general permit grants and aid. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I still have to do the report for last summer's work, but it's kind of getting to the top of my list now. So, I um, have to, until July 1st to get it done. So, I've been procrastinating on that one a little bit. Any big bridges, culverts, um, road redos that you know? No. Nothing. Nothing really think that I can think of. Um, I do. When I talk to Shauna, um, I want to try to find out about who to ask for doing another inventory or for guardrails, because mm. that's again that's another piece of information that I know that we used to have that seems to be um, oh, I guess I don't remember missing. One. Yeah, um, Harry definitely had something that he was working from for different projects for, for the guardrails. Um, he had a list. Um, oh, of places? I don't know where it is, yeah. Um, but, you know, like Charity or Hell, I know, was kind of on, on the list to do some work on um, the bottom part of Foster Hill Road. Um, we did the upper part last year. Um, so. Um, and you know, there's a culvert on Bailey Bridge Road that's in pretty sad shape. That would be a fairly major project. Yeah, it um, it's been hanging around for a couple of years. Uh, right, yeah. Somebody uh, came and looked at it last year and said it's not an emergency yet, but it's definitely um, it's something to think about in the next few years. Um, so um, I wanted to talk about um, the Highway Paving Reserve Fund. Um, you know, we, we know that there's $42,000 in it right now. And at some point, um, I'd like to have us determine an amount that we're, when we get to that, um, to have like a cap for it so that um, we can kind of pull back from putting some of the Swenson quarry money. We put 25% um, per year sure. of the Swenson quarry money, um, which is about $7,000. Um, into the paving fund, um, and pretty much all of the money in the paving reserve fund right at the moment has come from Swenson Quarry. Um, so, um, you know, my thinking is I'd like to research a little bit more, um, get an estimate for what the paving for the upper Cabot Road would be, um, and that would be a town match yeah, sure. for yeah. paving <clears throat> grant. What we would do is apply for a paving grant for that. Um, yep. And then also, um, and then get an estimate at the same time for the Valley Lake Road um, mm -hmm. part with the school, so that we have a sense of how much money we need. Um, and I would like to try to do this before we actually do the um, 
the final budget for taxes. Sure. Um, so that we would, if we were to, if those two projects would come underneath the um, forty-two thousand dollars that we would have now, I would really like to take the twenty-five percent um, that we have designated for the paving reserve fund for fiscal year twenty and put it towards the highway budget to try to bring that budget yeah, that down. That makes a sense. Bit. Um, it would be seven thousand dollars based on the twenty-eight thousand dollars that um, that we you know we seem to be. Be receiving every year from um, Swanson. So many other, Michael. Are there grant monies available to pave that upper cap? Yes, road? that's what we when we had the project proposed. Right. Um, that was uh, VTrans has a paving grant um, that they. So what we would do is get an estimate um, for the whole project, and it's I think it's. Uh, I can't remember if it's 80%, 20%, or if it's 75%, 25%. But that figure that I mentioned um, when we were going to do that project, the $28,200, that was the town's match towards the whole project. Um, well, I would the upper and lower count? No, just no, the upper just part. The upper. Just the upper was 28K? Yeah. I would imagine that, um, yeah, that it'll be more because, you know, we're four years down the road. Um, yeah. But so I'm, I'm kind of thinking that. Um, and this is what I wanted to ask Shauna, is that we would apply for a paving grant for the upper part of the Cabot Road mm -hmm. um, this year, get that estimate done so that hopefully before, um, before the tax rate gets set, we would know how much, um, we would know that we got the grant for one thing, um, and we would know how much our match would be, and we would also have a, an amount for the bottom of Valley Lake Road. So, um, and if it's not if it's not enough, the forty-two thousand dollars that we already have, then that money from the Swenson Quarry would go into the paving reserve funds, so, and that would put us up roughly to about forty-nine thousand dollars. But we have an RFP that we promulgated for the lower cap room. I could change that around if you want, mm -hmm. and do some measurements for the upper part of cap room. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty simple to do. Right. Yeah. 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 Yep. I can so, do, would you like me to do that? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So and so, so seems like would, does the select board think it's worth trying for that paving grant this year? Um, I do. Well, I, I do. We be, can, yeah. You know, because if we can divert some of those monies from going into the paving fund and just sitting there until we decide to use them right. into something that's more usable mm -hmm. into the highway fund, right. you know, I think that's a, a great way to go. Yeah. And I think that, you know, if we were awarded the grant this year, um, I think we have, we wouldn't have to do the work, this is another question for Sean, we wouldn't have to do the work necessarily this summer, we could wait and do it next summer. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of how that paving, the paving that What's the grants do, Mike? I don't know. I'll have to look okay. at it. It's sometime this spring, I think. Yeah, we still got time. It would be yeah. nice to get it done if we can, mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to have to do any work on it. You know, once it's right. put out, it's going to be the contractors that do it, so it's not a road crew thing for no. this part. Right. But and the thing that, you know, if it's done, of course, then our, our road south budget is we'll go probably going to double. Yeah. Um, that's what we have planned on. Um, yeah. When we were thinking that that, that would have gotten But paid. there is a, the other side of it is we're not going to be graveling that road. Right. Right. You know, so there's a savings, not, it's not all mm -hmm. expense right. when right. you do that. Not spending so. time grading it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah. time grading it. So. Yeah. Is there any need for guardrails? Part of the lower RF, uh, the lower cabinet <coughs> RFP was to install guardrails. Right, and they were installed. <coughs> there's uh, a place between what? Below Dan Jarnus's driveway, there's no guardrails across from the cemetery, is there? There's a few places yeah. up there that... Yeah. Yeah, right before the road, going up the dams, is, that's definitely a good draw. Yeah, so it, right it wouldn't be a bad idea at the same yeah. time mm -hmm. to put some guardrails in. And yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Those are not magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Culverts are. We could, we could use a culvert. culvert fund. Well, this probably wouldn't go in... Probably the money to pay for this, it probably would be the fiscal year 21 budget. So. If we're planning on putting gardens in the budget. So, Michael, do you want me to do one for uh, Valley Lake Road too? Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
I don't. I remember that you had a special payment mix because of the granite trucks. So I don't know if we should do that on the other side too. I did. Yeah, bitumen is concrete. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it was a special paving mix. A special paving yeah. mix. I know you researched yeah. it. The guy at the trans retired, so there's going to be a new okay. person that Maybe I can be. torment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nice sure about that. Yeah, the other side of the say isn't getting in. Going to be getting into the big truck traffic like that. Right, not occasional not, fire truck. But yeah, yeah. School buses. Yeah. yeah. Town trucks. Town trucks. Yeah. yeah. So that's part of that's part of that thirty percent engineering. That's part of this letter. I'm presuming. I I assume that um, that the, either the paving would be. I think actually it, it could be part of the design. We'll have to talk to the whoever is going yeah. to be doing that design work. We could definitely. Request that that be a part of the design. It makes sense to do yeah, that. Yeah, it does. Yeah. The design work, most of for this is the implementation of the different erosion controls, but um, there's no reason that we couldn't request that that be a part of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was my questions about. So, um, we'll definitely get on the, the paving grant. Um, Contact Shauna about that. I think what I think you know. Usually, I remember Harry saying that there was kind of a three or four year kind of recycling of paving. Like you know, if there are just different towns that ask for paving grants every year, it's sure, yeah. usually not such a sure bet that they'll get them. Yeah. But but if you're somebody who frequent infrequently requests, yeah. usually usually you get it. And, um, we haven't requested any paving for. Not one. since the lower part of the cattle road. We don't have any paved roads to request. Right, we don't really have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we did find out that's a class two road, so that gives us yeah. more funding from the state, right? Yeah. 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 That cuts down our share yeah. of it. So. Yeah. You were able to find the documentation that we had been submitted for the upper and for valley? No. No. no I can't find the grants or. Um, you know, whatever there was an estimate for the lower, right. you know, I haven't been able to find it. I'm going to go dig through the filing cabinets at the town garage. There might be something there. Yeah. Do a good cleaning out of it. Right. <laughs> Let's go through everything. There's quite a few. There's at least two or three filing cabinets. I'm not sure what's in them. But I'll ask Terry if he knows where they might be. Yeah, he might, he might know. He might remember. Um, so the other thing on my list is um, the last meeting uh, we signed a letter of support for um, a full design work for um, the um, Kingsbury Branch uh, Tactical Basin Plan. Um, there were five priority sites that were listed. Um, and Pam DeAndrea, who is working on the grant, um, to uh, get a full design for those uh, five sites, found out that um, she could only apply for one site um, with a grant. So, but then um, I discussed with Pam that actually the sites, there are two sites that are really sort of one project. So we managed to convince them that um, to go for a full design for the two sites, the, the uh, school parking lot runoff and then the runoff from the school parking lot down to a catch basin um, by the fire department annex building. Um, so um, so that necessitated a new letter of support um, and it'll also bring down the uh, the grant uh, cost. Sure, yeah. Well, because it's only two sites instead of five. Um, so is the, uh, what's the engineering cost? Initially it was 40000 40, 48000 yeah. and now it's 34000 um, So, and there'll be a 10% match from the town and that'll be less now too. So what we should be easily, between the road crew sure. participation and, and my time, should be easily meet that. But here, here's kind of a breakdown of the new, um, what the new grant would be for. Shall Brian sign this as well? Yeah, we'll, let's all, all sign it. Yeah, I guess the, the official pen. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. So the thinking is, is that the, the design work would happen uh, this, <coughs> this summer, um, and then uh, over the winter, um, 
and Pam has some ideas for um, people to approach, agencies to approach for their implementation. So with any luck, um, two summers from now, um, the work will be done um, and the paper will be done. Yes. So, uh, so, Michael, I'll turn that hour of you around. When did you meet him with Shauna, or does that still have to That'll be after finished? town meeting. Okay. But I'm going to ask her about the paving grant, and I'll start working on the paving grant before before then. Um, to just kind of get a, a sense of, um, you know, whether or not she thought we would get the grant. It's been quite a while since. When did we, what did we pay last? The lower part of Cabot Road, um, yeah. that was three years ago? I can't remember either. It was. Boy, it seems further yes, it was back than that. It, it wasn't further back than that. I know Skip was on the select board then, was, so it would have been within your three-year term. So I would say three years, three years ago. ago. That was my first RFP. Right, right. For the town, anyhow. My yeah. first foray right. into V-trans and... Right. The two minutes concrete asphalt yes, and the consistencies of your it. pavement research. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yes, my head spin. Yes, so it was three years ago. This, yeah. Yeah, this coming summer, so yeah. less than three years ago, I yeah. the moment. That road's holding up well, right? No cracks or anything anywhere? So it seems to be. Yeah. We did a nice job at a little parking area. Or mm -hmm. yeah. run a little runoff area. Yeah. 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 Some new guardrails. Yeah. So kind of Perfect. So. All right, I'll get on that. And I'll, I'll do. I'll get a hold of Shauna and just get a, get that grant started. That's it on my list. Can't think of anything else? Yeah, yeah good. So you'll check with with Greg number right. one to talk about part timers and whether or not right. Yeah. Whether or not they should be I'm working as often as they do. I'm pretty sure I'll, I know what he'll say, but <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So we have four minutes. Uh -huh. So uh, we're going to take a short break here, and I'll be okay. right back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dave here. Hello, Dave. It's Michael Gray. Um, people are kind of just assembling around the table, and um, we're going to have you on first. Um, we're mostly just kind of an inter interested in an update from what's going on down in the House and the Senate about the putting off um, this mandated merger for a year. So I'm going to oh, say... Great. Michael, can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay. I'm going to set you on the table and let us know if you can't hear everyone else okay. That sounds great. Okay. All right, you're on. Dave, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hello. Okay. So we have. Thank you. So thank you for accommodating me. Uh, soon, when the time change comes, I'll be able to drive at this time of night. So I hope. <laughs> can you fill us in on on what's going on in the House and the Senate um, regarding uh, the year? Um, yes. Yeah, I'd, I'd be glad to. Uh, let me start in the House. So on the, finally, the second vote, by a very large margin, the House voted to grant extensions to the July 2019 deadline until July 2020. Not for all districts, but for most of them, uh, most importantly for, for Woodbury. Um, the uh, bill now is on its way. Uh, to the Senate, it's it's very important, if I may suggest, for I'm I'm asking all the towns in the district, uh, 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 in your district, and on the other side, uh, Callis, uh, Middlesex, Worcester, etc., to reach out to Senator uh, Andrew uh, Pelchik. Um, he is on the Senate Education Committee, um, and it's critical. In order for this to have any hope, it's great to make it through the House, but if the Senate doesn't approve it, it will not matter. The Senate, um, as of yet, has not started to take any testimony on it. My hope is, because you folks are far more influential as constituents of the Senator than me, but I will also, in the building, um, ask him to help out and at least take up the bill and consider it. And he can go to his chair 
and uh, make the case and see what he can do. And he can also give you uh, an accurate assessment of it. The, um, at the same time, one of the arguments, the First Amendment attempt we made failed. Uh, and one of the arguments was, well, the court's going to be hearing this on, I think, February 15th. Why don't we wait until then? We argued, finally, successfully, that just because the court's going to hear it, it's not likely a judge will make a spontaneous or timely decision. Mm -hmm. The lawyers have explained to me that they're, they're on the 15th it will be what's called a summary judgment, where the judge will listen to the case and make a decision as to whether there's, quote, irreparable harm, end quote. It's a high standard. Um, but uh, he's not likely to do it right on the spot. He will take it typically under advisement. Now, should they fail in that, um, and the judge does not, if the judge grants an, ex an extension at that time or a moratorium and puts everything on hold, that is good for those communities who need more time. Um, if if uh, the judge says, no, you haven't met the standard, the court cases can still continue. They're just at a, uh, at a slower pace whenever they come up on the docket. People that are, that are arguing uh, the court cases are quite optimistic. I'm not an attorney. I don't know, but they feel quite confident that the constitutionality issues are way in their favor. Yet to be seen. Now, if I may, just going into the weeds a little bit, which I'm reluctant to do, um, you folks, as far as articles of association and requirements that you have, you need to work with your superintendent and the Agency of Education for interpretations as to what you can do. However, uh, my understanding, the way we were uh, briefed on this, is that if the extension goes through, uh, and the Senate should grant it, or even the judge grants it, it allows communities to, um, they have to vote on it, um, but I think it's the, it's the boards voting, the two members for each town and not all the uh, masses of voters, on, on amending the articles. For instance, I think it's Article 14 uh, down toward the bottom. You know, that's where somebody could say, look, I'm just um, giving this as an example. No school should close for at least the first five years um, to give people time to develop relationships, to do work, et cetera, to see how things are going to go. Um, it, it, it gives the opportunity with the extension and the articles. Um, my understanding is it opens up and gives more flexibility to people to work on some of these issues that are, that are most troubling for people. Let me pause there and come up for air and see if there are any questions or if I haven't been clear in any ways. Questions? No questions for me. No. No. I have a question. David's Diana. Um, Hi, Diana. What the things that are that the court is uh, being asked to do are pretty different from just an extension, aren't they? are. Um, the court cases would overturn it. Mm. But, oh, the but whole thing? It, it, mm. the, um, initially, though, the judge could say, I'm granting an injunction to put this all on pause, which would create, uh, in a sense, an extension, though it may not be time uh, sensitive. Mm. He may say, stop. I think there could be harm. I want to hear these cases. Don't go on any further. That's a possibility. But Diana, you're right. They're they're asking to overturn. Yeah. So if the judge overturned the whole thing, then we can just kind of figure out who owns what and kind of go on our way the way OLS have. We wouldn't be forced to merger. Is that the understanding? That's that's my understanding. But ultimately, mm -hmm. it would depend on his ruling. Right. Uh, but yes, yeah. yes, that's okay. that's my understanding. The problem, as you may know, there's different deadlines and. The fear is that people, schools have to comply with the deadlines that are in the law now, mm -hmm. so they might start, uh, my word, unraveling or debundling and forming new boards, and it will be very hard to 
walk back from that once they start, but perhaps not impossible. So do you think that if the House and Senate gave the towns a year, um, that the judge would be able to, that this whole court thing could be resolved within that year? So towns would know what to do? I do. I do, yes. Okay. I, I, I do think that is a possibility. As Diana said, the judge is going to do, is ultimately, the, uh, uh, I'm going to back up a little bit. One of the arguments was, if you guys, House and Senate, vote for an extension, well, then what does the judge have to do? You've already done it for the judge. No. But, as Diana pointed out, the judge is considering doing even more than that. Well, if the judge goes really far, then this could end up going to the Supreme Court, right? Well, that's the, assuming Unlikely. that they takes it there, yes. No. Mm -hmm. Dave. I'm not sure they would, but that's, uh, that's to be known. They could appeal it. Mm. Dave, this is Stephen Murphy. Hello? Hi. Hello, greetings. Hi. Yes. Dave, I've read what I think was the bill that passed the House, and I didn't see... I didn't see any language in there that would change the authority in, in amending those articles of agreement. You mentioned earlier that perhaps the authority would change from the electorate and give the, give the decision to the board. Can you, do you have that language or can you explain that a little bit more, please? It's an opinion from the Vermont School Boards Association and the Legislative uh, Council I, I uh, tomorrow I can cut and paste that and send it to you, Stephen. That would be helpful. Great, it, thank you. It lays it, lays it all out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. any, any other questions? No. So it sounds like we should call our senators, or email our call. senators? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Call, email, uh, yeah, people need to do that. He doesn't hear from people. He won't be. I, I'm not. I'm not disparaging him at all. But he's not, he's inclined to have other other challenges to work on. Mm -hmm. He needs to know um, that this is top priority. Mm -hmm. Means a lot to you. And there's other towns in the same group, which is a good thing. He's got four or five towns in Washington County, all in a similar predicament. Mm -hmm. And it's it's not just him either. It's a uh, Senator Polina and Senator Cummings, but they're not on the Education Committee. A Andrew is, and he can, so it's more timely. But I, I, I would email them also, saying, please help us in anything you can do. And I, I will be talking to the other towns, asking them, I'll be talking to the legislators of the other towns, asking them to do the same thing with their towns and get them to call in as quickly as possible. They're strength in numbers. We started in the House at quite a disadvantage. There were only about 25 of us who this mattered to, and we, we, ended up, we ended up succeeding. So if people take the time and listen, I think they'll be sensitive to it. I hope so, at least. Is this helpful? Yes. Very yes. helpful, yes. Very much. Yeah. And thank you for all your work pushing on this for the last few weeks. Oh, you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. It's been a lot of fun. Well, folks, um, I'm happy to come anytime when the when the weather breaks. I share it with Michael at the site. I can't drive at nighttime, but uh, when that changes, I'd be glad to pop in in person, uh, um, March or April, uh, at, at any time to go over any issues. Thank you. Great. That'd be great. Okay. Have a great. nice evening. Great. You Thanks too. For your time. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye now. Right. Bye bye. <laughs> phone work. Yeah. <laughs> Our low tech ten year old phone. Yeah, that was pretty low tech. Yeah. That was very clear. Yeah. 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 So tasks to do is to uh, call Anthony and Ann Cummings and Andrew by the sounds of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And maybe get word out for other people to call too, besides just mm -hmm. those of us that are here in the room. I put something on Facebook, Woodbury Facebook Connections, a couple weeks ago with, with all the email addresses for those, both the mm -hmm. House and Senate. Uh -huh. um, there was a bunch of people who made comments, some of them, 
saying, oh, we got to do this, let it go forward, and whatever. But anyway, so those email addresses are there, and if anybody wants to chime in there and say that they would think this is a good idea, that we're just asking for an extension, not saying that it's necessarily a bad thing, but too many details to be worked out in a couple of months. And yeah, another year would be very um, beneficial, no I think. Problem. Yeah. You can do things much more graceful instead of doing things so quickly. Mistakes yeah. are going to happen, like the Lawyers articles of agreement. Mistakes happened in that, mm -hmm. where they didn't consider that towns owned their own schools, buildings, and land. You know, they they believed that the uh, school districts owned them, and that that was a fallacy. You know, mm -hmm. In some cases, like Woodbury's case, yeah, or Callis, and Callis, or Callis yeah. 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 So there are other towns besides <clears throat> us that have found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That the town's actually owned the building. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I was a little, well, that's a whole other topic, but the, um, the Attorney General's article in the Gazette about, um, well, just his statement about mm -hmm. ownership of buildings. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, a very big piece, I mean, 70 they're... pages of reasons why. Uh -huh. Anyway, huh. I, uh, so in the article it refers to... You should to read it. Yeah. I just yeah, got I the Gazette yesterday, yeah. so I just... But that's, I, he's representing the state sure. in the yes. court cases. So, he yeah. says the state owns everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But the way the headline, it, yeah. the headline makes yeah. it sound like if the Attorney General said it, it's, you know, that's the way it's, it is. But it's, it's, no, but it's, 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 it's important to read case. that side. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. important yeah. to know what's up, because I was mm -hmm. unclear of that mm -hmm. anyway. I don't know what's... Mm -hmm. It's like the uh, OSSU's attorney. It's good to read what he's thinking, which I don't agree with for the most part. And, you know, I believe that you folks, the Woodbury School District, should engage some sort of legal advice other than Mr. Tui. That's just my opinion. I should have asked Dave if there's any chance that the Senate might decide before our big meeting on the 19th, but I forgot. <laughs> Probably well, unlikely, because they're, next they're meeting on the 15th. I mean, he, he there's something that will be um, yeah, the court case. Oh, that's the court case, yeah. but that's not the Senate vote. No. Right. Yeah, I don't know how long it takes them to get something on their calendar. But everybody should know that on the 19th is the big meeting for all the three, four school districts at the Hardwick Elementary right. School. Mm -hmm. And they'll be electing a moderator and a, deciding a few other important things. So that's kind of a, I, I think we should put in not only about in, on Front Porch Forum and Woodbury Connections, but get out locally and or send to... Uh, and uh, to the to senators to and also go to the meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff kind of like. Mm -hmm. Okay. So part of this is next steps. Okay, let's, let's presume that the Senate doesn't move this forward and we're left with what we have now. So I don't know if you guys have an agenda on the agenda. I think I sent the uh, agenda to you. There are some printed yeah. up by, by the city. I kind, of, yeah. I kind of ticked off what I believe is the next steps. You know, and, and even if the Senate does agree with the House and the, and the governor signs it, we should act on this you know, as, as soon as we practice. So number one would be purchase for the 14 acres of the wetlands that we know that the school, the very school district owns. So however that's going to happen, we should move forward with that. That's on our next agenda item okay. too. So the town of Woodbury, select board, is very anxious to purchase that. So however that can happen, we'd be happy to purchase that. Purchase it? Yeah, for mm -hmm. giving it for a dollar for something like that, you know, just it's not in the budget. Whatever makes it legal. I know yeah. it's not. I know it's not in the budget, but <laughs> suffice to say that you know we are very anxious to get a hold or to purchase that. 
and use it for recreational purposes or something like that, Michael? Or well, you hopefully use it for what it's being used for right now. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no change. And so, however that happens. The second, to me, the most second most important item would be to settle on a lease for not only the 14 acres, but also buildings, library, uh, that building which houses, houses the uh, community room, and come to terms with the language that allows it to continue as is. Any questions or comments on that? I know. Yeah. I wonder if there's been any any re rewritten draft of that lease at our last select board meeting, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry, the school board meeting. Yeah, yeah, Joanne said that's that that's would be exchanged that. between the attorneys. That's been shared yep. with the OSSU, and I believe it was shared with Sean Tui, mm -hmm. their, their attorney. And he wrote back a missive, which I don't really agree with. So, uh, you know, I don't know where it stands. I, I haven't seen his draft or his edits to that draft lease that we sent them. It's been like two, two and a half weeks now. I haven't said, I haven't I seen haven't. anything yeah. from him in that form of editing of okay. that lease, or any yeah. even new lease. I but I would expect that. that we would need more from him or whatever. Think, well, I don't know, would we? Well, that, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just speaking like yeah. if there is a is a point of view, I would imagine we're going to have that conversation right. with, with at our next board meeting right. about that. Did you receive his his email, which uh, yes ticked off? Joanne his, uh, okay, he shared forwarded that, with that to us. So yeah. he has his point of view, and right. I'm sure Joanne shares that as well. I don't necessarily agree with everything that he said in that email, and but he's he's representing the OSSU. He's not representing right. the Woodbury School District, nor is he representing anything to do with the town of Woodbury. Can I ask what the what the quarrel was about or what the issue was about, what he disagreed with? I saw at I one remember. point a draft of the lease that you sent to me. Right. And I don't have that in front of me. He just... I have a copy of it here somewhere. It's, it's unclear to me who has the authority to say whether or not a lease is well, different even possible. people have different opinions. You That's the hard mean, part. You don't know either? Yeah. No. no. Yeah, he didn't say, I think he said in his, no, I'm just trying to remember back, that a lease would not be workable. What, a lease between the town of Woodbury and the new district? And the new district. And the new district. Yeah. I see. Would be untenable. Yeah. Yeah. And they would not enter into a lease. So to me, that was kind of a threat, uh, kind of a threat. It was, you know, and, and they would basically shut down the school right from the get-go. So I, I wonder if that, if that assumption is under the default articles of agreement. Because he, I, he is quoting quite a bit um, of the default articles in that statement. Yeah. Um, which, um, but we've had other, I mean, we've, we've heard other point of view about that, whether it, it seeming that it is legal. Right. Yeah. So it seems that we need um, uh, counsel uh, on our behalf. You I do. mean, it seems like so. So we, when we last had our meeting, um, we agreed that we didn't need it. Right. But because we hadn't heard from uh, Mr. Mr. Tui right. and uh, blah blah blah. So right, I think we we need to re look at that, and mm -hmm. uh, we if hopefully. We now have a little, if, if the Senate passes this, we have a little time. Right. If not, sure. we need to, well, we need to move along, and that's what we're going to be right. doing with no our lease what, with you. No yeah, matter what. With the, the town, time. rather. Yeah. So once this uh, new district is formed as of February 19th, then are the, will they be the ones that have to agree whether or not a lease is viable? The transitional yeah. board, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It stays as until July 1. Yeah, no, the, right. the, the no, I, I because the, the school board, the Woodbury school board, the elected school board work continues to work Correct. up until so they end it. Yeah. Whether it's 2019 or yeah. 2020. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
the others, the, the board that will be working a working group. Well, I don't know how how it's all going to play out in, in terms of who who's going to be doing what, but it's, it'll be a budget group that will that will move forward. The transitional team, which is made up of um, two members of the of everybody's school boards, will be working on the on a budget. I know we were thinking of trying to have a lease between the school boards, district, and, and um, the town for the remainder of this year till July 1st, and then we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. so. so it seems that we need to get some further legal advice on whether it's possible, first of all, to have a lease between the town of Woodbury and the new district. That's number one. Number two, how do we arrange that? And then number three, see if we have some agreement from the other towns, if in fact we need to amend the Articles of Agreement. So it seems like we have three steps I ahead think, of us here. I think initially, though, though, Stephen, we should have a lease between the town and the existing school. Mm -hmm. I agree. Right. And that's, and that's, and that's number that's one. Because <laughs> understanding now that we own the building, the town owns the building. Mm -hmm. Everyone here, except for Laura, owns the building. <laughs> you know, you know, we have to move forward with that. Yeah. You know, and that, that, that to me is step number one. And then whatever happens, happens. You know, because we, we, the board, cannot sell any town assets, something as large as that, without first having a meeting with voters. It has to be a board meeting, and there's, right. there's statutes that stipulate you know, the mechanics of doing that. And so we have to do that as well. So, but first, I think, between the board and the existing school district, and then see what shakes out. Would that give time to have that roof replaced? We will. And that's as that's long next. As in the lease, this lease with the school board is active and hopefully signed, stating that over the building maintenance and the excess fund balance that was left over from the previous fiscal year. Well, you guys are going to have to Well, we still don't budget. know the definitively about that as from our, um, I mean, we heard back from Joanne about that um, from the attorney, the from Mr. Tuohy, I guess. It was a again. cap of only 80000 yeah. yeah. and it's not a matter of, these are funds that have already been raised through taxes. This is not a matter of um, fair market value. Fair market value. This money is already raised and it and it's sitting there. It's not a matter of we have to re we have to pull this money out of out of pockets again. The money's there. And um, I understand that. it's already been voted on for Correct. the use of the building maintenance by the voters. So when I when I read that lease, I read it a few times. The one that you edit, you suggested that we look at, and or no, it was actually a, a, a Patrick Flood proposed a lease, which you I'm looking at you because it looks like you're the only one that actually edited or, or yes. made, made corrections Skip on and that. Patrick worked on that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, would we we would be writing into this lease? Possibly, that those funds would be used um, would be handed over to the town. Would so be the building maintenance. The, the building maintenance. So it's under building maintenance and. It's a reserve fund. Right yeah, now. but right. I guess I was wondering um, whether we we would need to make it be a rent. I mean, I guess that's I'm not sure. That's what Joanne was yeah. talking she about. Was right. suggesting this. Yeah. Right. But, but it has nothing to do with market value. It's not that right. the town's trying mm -hmm. to. Well, there's some confusion there. I'm not. I'm right. not sure that I understand that correctly. Brandy pulled a report today that indicates there's ninety-two thousand dollars in the building maintenance fund, and that's a reserve fund, and by statute that should be utilized for that express purpose. If it's used for anything else, it's up to the voters to decide what that purpose would be. But as a school board, that 
you can make that decision. And with the fund balance, you can make that decision where you want that money to go. If it's turned over right. and we do have to merge, and then that pot goes. Right. So could they make that? Could that decision be separate from a lease if they, if the school board still exists till July, June 31st? Joanne seemed to think that it has to be in a way of a lease of of us requesting the money. So it right. kind of makes It'll it look like town. us she was looking bad, it. wanting money, and it, that's not it. The money's already there. The taxes right. have already been raised for it. Right. She was um, suggesting that we and that we call it rent. We would be using right. the money right. to but replace the rent. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she first she suggested maybe the rent for the three months or whatever until July 1 yeah. could be uh, a way to get our to get our money back um, from the uh, reserve fund which made kind of sense but then she started talking about well yeah I mean yeah it is going to look like it's a lot but if everybody knows it's just well, getting our own money back you know they're not going to say oh my god weird. we're getting thirty thousand yeah. dollars a month yeah. we, can, <laughs> yeah. we put language in the lease saying that we're going to well, lease it we, to you folks for one dollar, right. and with the funds that you have in, in That's the, the reserve fund, you know you already have that money there, and it's your money. It's this Woodbury School District's money until June, until until July first. If you read the articles of agreement, after July first or after June thirtieth, any monies in reserve funds and surpluses all go to the newly formed district. You know, it's my understanding, though, the problem here is that the a school district cannot make capital improvements on a property it does not own. I think that's the catch. Right. Well, that's why right, she came up with that idea about yes. the rental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although they have been doing so for a hundred years, so, you know. Norm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really. Norm, Norm <laughs> Eckin has been weighing in on this, and he's got some great thoughts and plus he's done this before you know, he's, he's a wealth of information in, in well, terms of you know, instances like this <laughs> all, I, all I'd say really is you're not going to negotiate a lease here in an open meeting w without the people that need to actually draw the leases able to uh, advise on that it's a it's a complicated legal situation and I think the only real comment I'd make here is yes it's very clear that the, our school board needs its own attorney to look out for the for their interests, which are the same as the towns, really, in large in large regard. But you know, it um, and yes, I've had some conversations about some around some of the legal matters here, and um, uh, and I, I certainly disagree with some of the advice that we're getting from from the SU. So I think that the school board needs its own attorney to make sure we're working on their behalf, to because I hear a much different interpretation. Than what you're getting from from the SU. Sure. Can you recommend an attorney? I would. I wouldn't in an open meeting. Pardon me. I wouldn't in a meeting like this. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I have a couple questions about the lease too. If now is a good time. So, a draft of the lease that I read. It's not. I'm a little afraid the library is going to slip between the cracks here. So, in one of the versions that I read, it said and. Um, that the Woodbury School District has use of the property every school day until 5.30. And you can look at that language, and you cannot operate a community public library if the school district has sole use of that property during those hours. Um, I guess I'd like to make it explicitly clear that the public library has the right to operate when the Board of Trustees sees fit. Um, my other concern is there's no mention of memorandum of understanding in that lease that's currently held in effect between the Board of Trustees and the Woodbury School Board. And that will expire on June, um, July 30th. And it's not clear to me what will then happen. That's another gray area. So I feel like w the fate of the library needs to be explicitly expressed in this lease. That's my feeling. I. I would be curious to know what other people think, but I, I think otherwise there's no clarity behind that. So whoever then takes that lease over, there's the library doesn't have a right to operate then. 
Yeah, there is nothing in there that stipulates hours of operation for the library. No. No, it doesn't. No. Um, and it's also not clear to me what will happen with the memorandum of understanding that the trustees currently have with the school board. Um, and that handles utilities and a whole mm -hmm. complicated arrangement right. between using that space and operating mutually beneficially between the school and the library. No, I did forward, you know, uh, there's another town that had a similar situation and they, they created a lease situation uh, similar to what you're doing. And it covers all those kind of issues you get covered in a lease and, uh, and you know, method for resolving disputes and all that kind of thing should right. be covered in, in any kind of lease arrangement, especially when it's complicated because of the library and the other public uses. That all gets covered in, in a lease, how, that, how that's dealt with. And that, you know, that's what should be in there. That would be great. I, I just wanted, like, and I, and I know it doesn't need to be complicated. I just want it explicitly written. I mean, overall, the situation's working fine. There hasn't been a problem. Right. And the question is just memorializing the, the current understanding that exists already and putting it down on paper to make sure it survives the transfer if there is to be a unified district. That's all. Right. Easier said than done, but that's right. Right. <laughs> So we need it. And we need a little committee to work on the lease because sure. it doesn't going to happen right here. No, it's not. Um, so the suggestion was made, I think Patrick made it, was like maybe uh, representatives from the school board and the select board and maybe the, the library, for sure. Sure. library yeah. work together on this lease. Now, I don't know whether, and then where, you, what comes first, the legal... Uh, help with that yeah. and, and how we go about that. I'm not sure how. That I think starting work. off with a base, um, which we have started a base, meeting as or finding an attorney, meeting once or twice, give him what we're working on, and then just start going from there. Well, no, actually, but ultimately, a meeting is, a, is, is required, but I think the both of us should have represented, legal representation at that meeting to see, okay, if we, if we come up with some, you know, stipulations in the lease that are totally outrageous and can't be supported, then we wouldn't even want to go down that rabbit hole. So, you know, I think we have to, school board, select board, library, two attorneys, sit down and talk. And it might be that work you put into a lease might come to naught, but if you have it ready, then there's a possibility that there could be a decision that it can be done. So we're ready to go when you guys are. So they really need. <laughs> well, we're really not we're not me meeting until the 26th of of February. Um. So. Um, <clears throat> Perhaps Patrick or... Maybe we need... Well, I don't know what we'll have to do. Yeah, we'll have to well, talk. Just to let us know. Okay. Can you have a little working group without having a special meeting? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the short answer is Actually, no. Actually, I don't think so. <laughs> you have a conversation. Even with if somebody. there's just one school board member and one select board member? Well, there, library isn't there a hike in the uh, town forest this weekend? We can all go for it. <laughs> <laughs> the trees here, nothing. Yeah, well, my mittens are pretty big. I don't know. Like that. It's going to be warm enough, you won't even need mittens. <laughs> oh, yeah, 30s, right. 40s, I heard. Okay, so next steps are um, get to work because what we want to do is. Do we need, well, I guess this is a question, do we need to have a lease before town meeting? I like don't a, think so. No. I don't think that's possible. I don't, I don't either. No, that's, that's, that's okay. No. But we will be voting. Will we be doing, we will, we may be, no, we won't be we voting. Won't be, no. If we, you want to get, a, if you want to have a, if you decide to have a meeting to vote on whether to use your, some amount of the surplus, is it for this? FY18, FY19 surplus, put that into the building fund. There might have to be a special meeting for that. Which that was set, correct? Well, there's a special meeting to vote on. 
That was a whole discussion we have about whether we could get it into the town meeting warning in time. No, it wasn't. And it didn't work that way. No, it wasn't. No what? It wasn't going to be able to make the right, warning. right. That that so was ended up work, being. So. Well, it is on the twenty sixth, isn't it? The mar of March. You mean for us to? I I'm not sure that we. <clears throat> What what is your recollection? Because I'm the not sure that we is on that, that Tuesday. N to send no. Off to mm. approve. No, I don't think. No, I don't remember even discussing that for as no. far as the roof is concerned. No, 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 no. So. Giving the extra money to be voted on. She was going to get back to us, and it wasn't based on the twenty sixth. I don't know. That's our next mm -hmm. scheduled school board meeting, but I. It's not a. Sp Special meeting. It's just a regular schedule. Yeah. It would have to yes. be after town meeting because town meeting was going to be too so. soon. Right. But there was a meeting set after town meeting. Mm. No, I don't think there was an actual date set. I think no, we just I determined that so we really couldn't have things prepared in time for town meeting, so we would have a special town meeting after sometime after, after town, town meeting. Yeah. But. I don't think we really, there's no data established. Yeah. There's a meeting of the amendment committee set for March 11th, and I believe I mentioned that at the last school board meeting. But beyond that, yeah. I don't know that there's another meeting set. No, not, not with a specific date. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, it should, it should be one set because we're losing weeks. Right. Now it would have to be like the third week in March if it was decided. This week, I don't know whose job that is. So the the school board wouldn't really be able to discuss hiring a lawyer until your February twenty sixth meeting. Uh, I think we have to agree on that. Yes. Right, you would have to agree on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not to say that that couldn't be nudged ahead by asking someone if they would be willing to work, but mm -hmm. I think we have nudged to, as a board. <laughs> I mean, you have to to, kind of like, board, we'd yeah. have to agree to it as a board, right? I mean, then, right. but, um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, in terms of who, I mean, those suggestions can come forward at the board, and sure. um, we'll see what we, what's just, what we can yeah. move along yeah. with more quickly then. Do you, do you think that, um, could establish like uh, what I'll call a working committee for this lease with at the next school board meeting. Would that be something that you would need to do as a board also, just to? Oh, I think that we definitely now? would would say uh, would make a decision mm -hmm. on who would be work who mm -hmm. would be willing to work on a, as a as a committee, mm -hmm. or members of a committee that would include mm -hmm. somebody from the select board and the and somebody from the. Uh, the library. Mm, the I library. think the idea of inviting lawyers to come to a meeting that was really expensive, to draft right. something and have them look at it, and then maybe come to a meeting after mm -hmm. they go yeah. back and forth with their you know, I, I recommendations. Think, yeah. but I think a group can meet and come to agreement on what terms you want to have in the lease mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. And like Diana's saying, then that can be reviewed by attorney. Mm -hmm. But in the form, once they decide on, on picking one and so forth. but. But it's a, it's a meeting of the minds, writing up, you know, what the existing agreements really are is what mm -hmm. you're talking about doing. So you put, you have all the basis for that agreement there, and uh, the lawyer's job is to put it in legal form, but uh, you have a meeting of the minds around and, uh, about what should be in it, and then probably needs different levels of approval at that, sure, yeah. warn meetings or whatever. <laughs> but, the, uh, but to negotiate and, and to decide on a, a draft, essentially, that accommodates Everyone's understanding of what should be in it. And I think that can happen prior to, you know, having okay. have the lawyers involved. Sounds logical. And uh, hopefully we can maybe have the, uh, a, a, a bit of a discussion at our school board meeting. I mean, it's on the agenda uh, to, to get into a little bit more of what we want to be see on that lease so that when we next have a, when we have a joint meeting, there's some substance we can bring to the table rather than... Okay. Yeah, I guess that's the way I see it, but we'll see what, where we go from there when we meet. Now, as far as this goes, do we, have you guys seen these? Yeah, Request for bid for the roof for the yeah, yeah, this is No, this is, this is the one from last year, I from think. From last year, yeah. yeah. I got my hands on that. 
request for pricing for I think it's just the RFP from, from last it's a year. 32 page RFP. Yeah, that was what we saw. That's the last one that I saw. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's gone nowhere. No, so this is. That's the same one. That's the same one. I just. I, the board hasn't seen it. The okay. other members of the board haven't seen it. So I just, I just uh, copied the first four pages of it, and I sent the entire RFP to the board. I think today or okay. last week. So what I want to do is get this RFP on the street and get some prospective bidders on it. Because what I'd like to do is have it on someone's books that the root gets replaced this year. Right. Because it's to me it's important that we utilize those reserve funds before they vanish. Yep. Into we some have that in black hole somewhere. So I'm gonna take a look at this and I Richard Pembroke, he's from OSSU. Is he still over? No. 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 Okay. So he was the contact person. And I'm going to call Ian Lamphere. He, he was the uh, is the was the project consultant, the Garland Company. Never heard of the Garland yeah. Company. Ask Larry; he would know. Yes, and I don't know. I, I remember the name, but I don't yeah. know what what where he's. I mean, I know that he was going to be the project manager, but I don't. Or he was the one who was. I, I don't know. The clerk of the works. Is <laughs> I don't like know, the clerk of the works. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Pembroke is gone, and we have John. Did, did Larry Garland put together the RFP originally? Is he the uh, oh, project yeah. consultant? Ian Lamper. You know, this is a really comprehensive RFP. Reading through it. It was crazy big. Uh, Thirty-two. We, we didn't. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like that. Didn't seem to think. But one of the things that has to change is the project owner. Um, and the project owner is now down as the Woodbury Town School District, and so that has to change. So that RFP, because is something that, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm like, our, our, um, the OSSU said they were working on getting a new RFP together. Is it's, that your? It's, I don't know. Okay, that. but it's, it's been they in, don't the, have to do in, that. Dis in discussion. It was brought up that yeah. it was dropped because they don't own the building. But because they don't own the Yeah, they don't have to do that. Right. Yeah. But it didn't. the reason it didn't go somewhere last time was because the bids came in too high? Or? No, it, it was, said that. It was put out too late floor. in the season. Yeah. Um, oh. They just figured that, you know, I don't know if they even got responses. Oh. I don't think it didn't. even went out, did it? We, we got one, one yeah. from Rod, Rod Roofing, I think. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. And... And that's all. I think Larry said the same thing. It went out really late, and all the other contractors right. had already yeah. signed on to the project. Right. So, right. Was, yeah. Right. Was yeah. so we're, that's why we were thinking we need to get this out pretty yeah. soon just to get some competitive bids out there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So we'll do that. Okay. Go on. Okay. And another, another thing we should be concerned with is anything we do in that building, to that building, it's, it's, well, it's on the National Historic Register of important places, so we have to be certain that we're in compliance with whatever those mm -hmm. stipulations are. You know, what can you do? What kind of roof do you, can you replace it with? You know, things like that. So I'll take a look at that. Mm -hmm. I also took a look at grants from a couple of places, one in the state of Vermont, we are eligible for a $20,000 grant. Regrettably, grant submissions for this year mm. were done last fall. Mm. So, but there is a grant out there for a project such as this that would give us $20,000 towards this. Mm. So I, I've done that. I have uh, a URL that someone could click on and just put an application. So it's for twenty thousand dollars. So there was lower our out of pocket expense. Is that set through some historic preservation? It is, yeah. State right. historic preservation. Yeah. 
But would that possibly be payable after the fact? Like if the project was done? Well, <laughs> we don't know yet. Huh? You know, I look. <laughs> there can be so did you say strings attached to those grants. Well, there are, you know, because it's uh, on the National Historic Register, right. there are strings attached. Right. So you have to make sure that the contractor is aware of that and that. Uh, you know, if any changes to the roof line occur, or maybe there's some specific shingles that you have to use, or you can't use metal roofing, you know, I don't know that. Right. And there might be strings attached going on into the future, too, after receiving that grant money. It's been as my, long as, yeah, as long as they keep giving experience. money, you know, that's okay. Right, but... Uh, it's on the register, it's going to stay there, so... Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just thinking of my, you know, I used to work for a program in Hardwick that where we bought the old firehouse and we got a really nice grant to fix up the building. Um, and then anytime we wanted to do any work on it, they had to give us the okay. Um, you know, so there are strings attached into the future sometimes with, yeah, so yeah, with, with uh, can believe that the that. historic um, preservation money. So did you say that that was a that, that the deadline had passed for this year? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to be doing, uh, we're hopefully going to be doing this roof project this year. Where does that look? Leave us. I haven't got that far yet. Yeah. All I know is there are monies okay. there now. What, whether or not the the grant award has to be coincident with the project. Okay. okay. You know, we could extend. Yeah. Suppose or maybe extend the uh, project timeline for completion into next year next or something year. like that. So yeah, do you know whether Liz Pritchett is <coughs> in the state or in Florida or? She's not doing that work anymore. No, she's not. She wouldn't even give us some free advice. She's in the state, but she's not doing that, and she's not doesn't. But she's not maybe not a consultant anymore, but she would certainly know the regulations. She might give us some advice. Possibly. Mary Jo is probably in uh, Idaho. Yeah. <laughs> but she's still, I have her email. <laughs> she was always willing to help. Yes. Okay, so. Well, you're going to do your, R this blackboard's going to do the RFP. We or are. Look into we that. We are. Not okay. look into you're, it. Yeah, we are. We're doing it. Yeah. Okay. Have so that for the next meeting when we meet with them, probably, or sooner. Sure, I can have it for you. <laughs> I, can, I can have it by our next school, um, our next meeting, which is the twenty fifth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can turn this around. What are we doing this week? I can have it to you guys Monday, at the latest. But we may need a new project consultant. Raise your hand, Brian. Larry could be the clerk of the works. Yeah, because you're right there. Yeah. <laughs> just go out in the yard once yeah. in a while and take a look around. <laughs> okay, they're looking good. <laughs> and so we have to uh, have someone here to whom the uh, RFPs will be sent. Mm -hmm. Diana? That's all I need. Still moving forward. Anything else? Okay, good. <laughs> all right, well. So you guys are going to let us know about the well, or? Will any of you be attending the meeting on the 26th? Yes, the school board meeting? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, well, absolutely. great. Absolutely. Yeah. And in the meantime, Brett, if you want to put something together about you had talked yeah, that about would be helpful. Yep. you had talked about an MOU, you had talked about yep. hours of operation. Yep. And anything that concerns you that you might want in the lease, if you could put that together in a yep. in an email and send it along to us, that'd be yep. quite helpful. I'll be at the next school board meeting too. I'll bring that okay. up. Great. Yeah, maybe we can set those as decision items on the agenda. There can be some discussion, but maybe we can take action on decision over hiring an attorney and yes. maybe a lease if a, if a lease is in 
in its form or appointing members to a well, committee that to be form the lease. Yeah, that would be action. Okay. Equal to anything actionable. On the, opinion, on the lease, lease itself, but at least yeah. forming a committee yeah. to join with the select board. Okay. And members of the public, I'm supposing, if they want to weigh in, you know, because it is a public building. They're always welcome. Yes. Anybody, yeah. just come on down, you know? I mean, <laughs> Can I make a suggestion, though, about these school board meetings? Would you please publicly post your agendas and your meetings? In I, we do. I, they are so impossible to find online. I find it so difficult to find either oh, agendas oh, or meeting times. Agenda and meeting times. How are we doing? You guys are doing great. Oh, I can find them. I receive them. I know where to look for them. I can never. It is so difficult. And the only way I ever get them is I ask a school board member or I email Tess or Brandy. I just feel. So we're doing it on Front Porch Forum and we're doing it on Woodbury Connections. They're often not posted on those sites. They're, or, or they're posted like a day or two before yes. that. They, it is not sufficient yeah. time for people of the public to attend. So where meetings. would we post them? Or po just posting them earlier. You Sooner. could just post First. them earlier. Sooner. I mean, well, send it to us and we'll put it on the Woodbury website. Mm -hmm. That would also be completely useful. Oh, we should have it on the Woodbury. It's Elementary not on the school, school board website. <laughs> so no, you're right. Yeah. That's uh, okay. Uh, town website. And I think the school board meeting is on there, isn't it, Laura? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought you put it up. And yeah. I get the I get the emails from OSSU, and I just put them on the bulletin board out there. Nobody looks there. <laughs> okay. But that's what I do. I, I, no, would, I, I, was, I would really noted. appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, better communication okay. would be very helpful. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I don't do that, but Phoebe does, and she can do it quickly. Yeah. Or. All right. Great. So while we're all here, any other issues? Ways forward. Norma, do you have anything more to say about just thoughts about this whole situation in general, or? Yeah. No, I think that basically, you know, from what I know of it, it made sense to do a lease that survived the creation of the union, uh, mm -hmm. and um, that memorialized an existing situation. Uh, it is an asset of the of the school district. Uh, that they have this relationship and it's ongoing, and um, and and I think the uh, the statute uh, uh, allows for the assets of uh, the whole point is that the assets of the school district then become those of the union, and this is an asset of the school district. The fact that you didn't have this piece of paper, we haven't found one. Who knows if there was one at some point in the last hundred years that uh, some kind of agreement between the two, but in absent the. Fact on, facts on the ground are the facts on the ground. That's the relationship, and that's an asset, and it's moving forward. And that's what, once again, memorialized and should carry, carry forward. That's my understanding of the situation. But again, I'm not a lawyer. I need the proper legal advice to make sure that it's done correctly. That's my, my view of it. And, you know, I, you know, and that's what the, the timing thing, you know, if they get the one year extension, of course, it makes it a lot easier. Without it, it means. Um, you really have to look at very carefully at what the timeline is. How much time is it, do you need for the different warnings and different? What are the actions that need to be taken, and what what would be the timeline? How much notice is needed for each? How much time is needed for legal reviews along the way to make sure everything can happen? If, it, if we have to stick to the original timeline, it's as you know, it's horrendous. But um, but even. Even if you get the reprieve, kind of, still, you need to make sure it's moved along as expeditiously as possible, which means you still need to create that timeline and see how it can work. And, you know, um, it gets critical. Norm, did you want to um, have an opinion about that 15 acre deal with the swamp land? I mean, I'm sorry, wetland, sorry, wetland. I mean, when I broach a subject to the school Nature board, area. the school board and the superintendent, everybody says, oh, that sounds doable, but then all of a sudden it kind of got dropped. Do you school board members think oh, yeah. that that's being considered at all? Uh, absolutely. 
Yeah, it's on the it, we're we're it's on our agenda for the twenty oh. sixth. Okay. Yeah, I, I think there's other examples of towns that did similar things. Barrytown being one. You know, there's an mm -hmm. asset that was uh, transferred from from the school district back to the town because it's used for all kinds of town purposes. And uh, in this case, uh, my personal view of it is that. Uh, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to transfer it back to the town. I don't see any downside to transferring right. it. Um, and it's hard to predict any future issues that may come up if it isn't. And as long as it can be done legally and correctly, and that's what you need the proper advice for that, uh, My only concern should happen. Would be that the Woodbury School District is going away. So if the Woodbury School District owns that asset and the school district goes away, that 14-acre asset is just up in the air. Goes to the new district. Yeah. Well, that's why we want to sell it back right. to the town. Yeah, yeah so that, that, that certainly makes sense, and, and mm -hmm. as I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. So if, we, if, if the town then owns it, as it does the buildings, it would need to be in the lease that we, we can use those, the, that acreage. It is already. That would, be yeah. make, yeah. that would make mm -hmm. sense, yeah. It's yeah. in the lease already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we should probably include the other part of the wetland that the town does own in, in that lease for the school to use, because the school has been using some of it. It's a little, or you could just, oh, that little, just let it, leave it be. A little bit further <laughs> on. Yeah, it's yeah. a little further out. The, the, bottom, the southern yeah. portion. Yeah. And on the subject of a lease, potential lease between the town and the new district, I really think that would be mutually beneficial the town would get to keep the property which we've which we've had and been good stewards of for over a hundred years and the, the new district would be required to spend less time and resources on managing the building yeah. and there would be well there would be less cost involved in capital improvements those would be the responsibility for the town. So I think this would, would be appealing to the district. It may be less cost, but in ex <clears throat> excuse me, and in exchange, the town would get to retain ownership of the property. And because <clears throat> the budget is, a, is very sensitive, very sub sensitive area in, the, in, this, in this merger, and there's going to be financial pressure. So by maintaining ownership of the property, it seems to me, Woodbury would be providing a benefit to the district. Woodbury, the town of Woodbury would have to understand what the historic cost to maintain that school and library and community room is or was, so that you know, we'd be sure that you know, the cost per student coming from Woodbury would not have any monies in it earmarked for building maintenance, just for education. So that the budget, we would have to have some historic information, historical information on how much it costs to maintain the building. Which uh, well, they would have to be split up between the district and the town as far as who's responsible for what right. operating yeah. costs versus that's long -term. another lease. That's the next. Yeah, so we, we would have to understand how much it's going to cost the town to maintain the building, which we haven't been doing for No, no. So, oh, you're shaking your head. I like say it's fast to get worked out. Yeah. Right. Just assume it without the proper legal advice. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope the lawyer knows a lot because I don't. Yeah, oh, I mean that that, that is really would be really necessary because yeah, yeah, we're just make sure it's kind of babbling at each other like uh, if I don't want to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Anything? No. Very cool. <laughs> well, it's eight oh one, and I'd like to introduce a motion that we adjourn. Discussion? Meetings adjourned, they one. Thank you all for coming.